This is Mac OS Ken. Highs and whys for Apple shares. Apple puts its CSAM detection plans on hold. And letters from lawmakers both threatening and stupid. The letters, that is. It is Monday, the 6th of September, 2021. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Simply Safe. Get 20% off your system, plus your first month free when you sign up for interactive monitoring service at simplysafe.com slash macOSCan. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. We have talked before about the practical overwhelm I feel coming back after a few days off. From my show on Friday, the 27th of August through Thursday, the 2nd of September, I ended up with over 1,600 items in my newsreader, plus all the extra stuff I poked through on Twitter and Apple News Plus and various sites that don't do the RSS thing. So I hope you will forgive my having missed this story the one that had Apple hitting an all-time closing high on Thursday. According to a piece from Mac Daily News, Apple shares hit a new closing high, ending the day at $153.65, up $1.14. A piece from MarketWatch seems to pin the record on Apple's give on reader apps. I told you last week of Apple's Olive branch, the likes of Netflix and Spotify... A piece from Mac Rumors explained, Reader apps allow users to browse previously purchased content or content subscriptions for digital magazines, newspapers, books, audio, music, and video. Starting sometime next year, the Mac Rumors piece said, developers that create reader apps will be able to include an in-app link to their website for users to either set up or manage an account and sign up using a non-App Store payment method will be possible. Apple says this change will be applied globally to all reader apps on the App Store. MarketWatch seems to want to tie Thursday's pop to Apple's reading app change. Not only was Apple up about 14, roughly 0.75 percentage points, Netflix ended Thursday up 1.1 percentage points, while Spotify ended the day up 6.6 percentage points. Apple CSAM plans have been put on hold. There is no way you don't remember this story, the one that had Apple announcing expanded protections for children a few weeks ago. Among plans announced, Apple said it intended to reduce photos being sent to iCloud to a neural hash, then compare the hash to hashes for known child sexual abuse material, or CSAM. Matching a certain number of hashes would lead to the offending iCloud account being disabled and notification to the proper authorities. A number of individuals and organizations pushed back on the plan. Their stated concern was not for people who trade in and harbor such material, but for what purposes outside of CSAM detection Apple's technology might eventually be used. Now a piece from CNET says, Apple has tapped the brakes. On Friday, Apple updated the page covering its child protection plans with the statement, Previously, we announced plans for features intended to help protect children from predators who use communication tools to recruit and exploit them and to help limit the spread of child sexual abuse material. Based on feedback from customers, advocacy groups, researchers, and others, we have decided to take additional time over the coming months to collect input and make improvements before releasing these critically important child safety features. Not surprisingly, at least one group thinks never would be better than late. A piece from Apple Insider had the Electronic Frontier Foundation, or EFF, urging Apple to kill the plan entirely. An early and vocal critic of Apple's CSAM plans, the organization posted a response to Apple's postponement under the heading... Delays aren't good enough. Apple must abandon its surveillance plans. Quoting the Post, EFF is pleased Apple is now listening to the concerns of customers, researchers, 
civil liberties organizations, human rights activists, LGBTQ people, youth representatives, and other groups about the dangers posed by its iPhone scanning tools. But the company must go further than just listening and drop its plans to put a back door into its encryption entirely. Is that the reason Apple shares hit a new closing high on Friday? To be honest, any number of factors can send shares up or drag them down on any given day. That said, some investors may have been pleased that Apple will be able to go into the imminent launch of iPhone 13 and iOS 15, talking about the phones and the operating systems, rather than perceived privacy overreach. Whatever the case, Apple shares closed at a new record high to end the week last week. Not a huge move. Mac Daily News says shares were up 65 cents, or a little less than half a percentage point. They start the week this week at $154.30. Here now, a troubling story. Engadget says 11 Republican members of the U.S. House of Representatives have written to a number of big tech firms advising them against cooperating with the House investigation into the riot at the U.S. Capitol on the 6th of January of this year. Specifically, the piece says members of Congress are threatening legal action if the companies comply with a request for records related to the attack on the Capitol. According to the report, letters have been sent to Apple, AT&T, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Snap, T-Mobile, Twitter, U.S. Cellular, Verizon, and Yahoo. It was the one to Yahoo that caught Engadget's attention, as it was addressed to Yahoo CEO Marissa Mayer, who has not been Yahoo CEO since 2017. That's only one indication of how not up with the times the Congress members are. Another indication, and Gadget says none of the letters went to Reddit, Telegram, TikTok, and other key firms asked to produce records. The list appears to be a who's who of tech from several years ago. Totally awesome that these are the people deciding big tech issues of the day. Also, super neat that members representing one political party in Congress are urging big business to ignore requests from Congress. Speaking of information requests, Apple has one for its employees. So, like, are you guys vaccinated? Cult of Mac ran a piece last week saying the company is requesting that all U.S. employees report their vaccination status, but so far Cupertino has not mandated that employees get shots. Citing a Bloomberg report, the piece says Apple asked employees to voluntarily provide information on their vaccination status by mid-September, whether they work at home or in an office. Voluntary and confidential. Eh, Confidential for now, anyway. The piece quotes the message with the request, saying, It is possible your vaccination status may be used in an identifiable manner, along with other information about your general work environment, such as your building location, if we determine or if it is required that this information is necessary in order to ensure a healthy and safe work environment. Apple is requesting the information by Friday, the 17th of September, according to the report. More news in a moment, but first a word from Simply Safe, the right way to protect your home. I've told you for years how easy Simply Safe is to customize and install. Get the parts you need for the home protection plan that's right for you, then set it up. Setting mine up was, yes, super simple. Well, now they're taking that outside. Simply Safe just launched their new wireless outdoor security camera. You heard me, the system that US News and World Report called the best home security system of 2021 just got better. The Simply Safe wireless outdoor security camera has an ultra wide 140 degree field of view, 1080p HD resolution with an 8x zoom. It has a built in spotlight with color night vision, and of course, it comes with the ease of use that makes Simply Safe simple. 
and integrates with your Simply Safe home security system, extending its protection to the outside. Protecting your home, inside and out. That's Simply Safe. To learn more about the exciting new Simply Safe wireless outdoor security camera, visit simplysafe.com/slash macOS can. What's more, Simply Safe is celebrating this new camera by offering 20% off your entire new system and your first month of monitoring service free when you enroll in interactive monitoring. S I M P L I. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash macOS can. Word of a crowded new Apple store opening over the weekend. A report from Apple Insider says folks lined up Saturday for the grand opening of the Changsha Apple Store at China's Changsha IFS Mall. Social media posts showed rows of people queued up behind multiple rows of barriers, according to the piece. While no official number was given, Apple Insider puts the number of masked up, socially distanced attendees in the hundreds. Apple's investing an additional $30 million in its Racial Equity and Justice Initiative. That's on top of the $100 million already committed. Apple Insider ran a piece on the expansion last week, indicating that the new investment will be aimed at benefiting Hispanic and Latinx groups. Part of the new investment is in partnering with California State University, according to the report, specifically to launch a Global Hispanic Service Institutions, or HSI, Equity Innovation Hub. On the expansion, Erica D. Back, president of California State University Northridge, was quoted as saying, By reframing service through an equity and racial justice lens, the Global HSI Equity Innovation Hub seeks to exponentially accelerate educational equity across the CSU system and the nation. We are thankful for Apple's support as we aim to shift away from thinking about what students must do to be successful, instead thinking about what our institutions must do to successfully serve the Latinx community and students from other underrepresented groups. Roll over Beethoven, over to Apple Music. Last week, the Cupertino company issued a press release announcing the acquisition of Prime Phonic, No, it's not my Chemical Brothers cover band anymore. Rather, Apple's post says Prime Phonic is a renowned classical music streaming service that offers an outstanding listening experience with search and browse functionality optimized for classical, premium quality audio, hand-picked expert recommendations, and extensive contextual details on repertoire and recordings. And Apple has bought it? For an undisclosed sum. Probably not Beats by Dre money, but people do seem happy. Prime Phonic co-founder and CEO Thomas Steffens was quoted in the release, saying, Bringing the best of Prime Phonic to Apple Music subscribers is a tremendous development for the classical music industry. Artists love the Prime Phonic service and what we've done in classical, and now we have the ability to join with Apple to deliver the absolute best experience to millions of listeners. We get to bring classical music to the mainstream and connect a new generation of musicians with the next generation of audience. If you want to check out Prime Phonic before it's gone, too late. The service stopped accepting new subscribers last week. It goes offline tomorrow. Apple says current Prime Phonic subscribers will receive six months of Apple Music for free, complete with hundreds of thousands of classical albums in lossless audio, as well as hundreds of classical albums in Apple Music's spatial audio. Now the weird part. The press release says Apple Music plans to launch a dedicated classical music app next year, combining Prime Phonics' classical user interface that fans have grown to love with more added features. That is weird. Still, if Apple could make me feel more smarter about classic music, I'd call that prime funky. I kid, but honestly, if they can make classical music more accessible, that's a pretty good deal for everybody. Do bagpipes next. 
And finally today, good news for fans of the heartwarming the Apple TV Plus anthology series Little America is coming back for a second season. Eventually. Probably. In a since-deleted tweet, show co-creator Emily V. Gordon said, Our show is uniquely unsuited to shooting in pandemic times, as we have a lot of international actors and a different cast each episode, but we're prepping to shoot early next year. The inability to find that tweet makes one worry a tiny bit. However, a piece from Mac Rumors, which originally spotted the tweet, points out that Apple renewed the show before the show even debuted on Apple TV+. If you haven't watched it, by the way, highly recommended. Great writing by Gordon, great writing by her husband Kumail Nanjani, and who knows how many other people. Great casting, great acting, great stories about people who aren't famous, but who are great. If it's me, I'd start with the cowboy, then the jaguar, then the rest in whatever order you like. It's a wonderful show, and I look forward to season two. Eventually. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me, and sponsored by Simply Safe. Get 20% off your system plus your first month free when you sign up for interactive monitoring service at simplysafe.com slash macOS can. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOS can. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways, info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.